If you are stuck in the grind and don't know how to get moving, if you have lost your dream or struggled to know how to make it happen, if you have been dreaming of changing the world, but you're not sure where to start, the Add Valued Entrepreneurs podcast will help you transform your life with tools, knowledge, and support that will allow you to create a thriving business that aligns with your values and goals. This podcast is for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from the work they do so they can live the life they desire. You deserve it. It is possible. This show features interviews with people who have already created success in their lives and businesses and stories about everyday people living extraordinary lives. It's time for you to add value. My guest today is Fred Stokes. Fred Stokes has a personal mission to positively enhance the life of every person who comes across his path. His down-to-earth personality and his uncanny ability to connect with people is what sets Fred apart from other speakers or athletes of his caliber. While attending high school in Vidalia, Georgia, Fred excelled in basketball and track. However, it wasn't until his senior year that he decided to play football. As a result, Fred was offered a full scholarship to play football for Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, Georgia, under the legendary coach, Eric Russell. While at Georgia Southern, Fred played a vital role on two national championship teams. Fred was only one of two players on his team voted first team All-American after his senior season as an offensive tackle. Fred was drafted into the National Football League, where he would spend the next 10 years playing defensive end for the Los Angeles St. Louis Rams, Washington Redskins, and the New Orleans Saints. Fred had the awesome privilege of playing in and winning Super Bowl XXVI with the 1991 Washington Redskins against the Buffalo Bills. In that game, Fred recorded two and a half sacks, a forced fumble, and recovered another. Fred's Redskin teammates affectionately labeled him Big Play Stokes because of his knack for making a big play at the right time of a game. Fred is a highly sought after keynote speaker, delivering his motivational, inspirational messages on the main stage, in workshops, and at weekend retreats. In addition, Fred has found time to write and publish his autobiography entitled, The Bridge That Brought Me Over. Fred and his wife, Regina, have three boys, Lance, Landon, and Luke. I'm so excited that Fred's joining us today. Man, I am so blessed. I feel so grateful, Fred, that you're willing to to come on today and just share with us your journey. You've had uh, a lot of experiences that most people dream about and uh, just excited to be able to, to dig deeper into, into your story. Um, would you share, you know, what your movement from obviously uh, college to professional football, to Super Bowl champion, um, to entrepreneur <laughs> to start? <laughs> That's a mouthful. Uh, well, I appreciate you having me on the on the set, man. And uh, uh, you know, for for to to answer your question, I um, you know I only played one year high school football. I, my senior year, I played uh, my senior year only, and I got a full scholarship to go to Georgia Southern University. Wow! And from there, man, I played. I was there for five years. It was a brand new school program. The school's been there for years, but the football program was was practically. Um, a year and a half, maybe a, a year. It was his first inaugural season. They played a few games prior to my, the year before I got there, but uh, that was my first year there. And we played played five years there. The, the thing too, Robert, is I played no defense in college. I played all <laughs> offense. I, I didn't play any defense. I played offensive tackle. I played tight end for a bit, and then I got drafted as a defensive end by the uh, by the then Los Angeles Rams. And so you know, people kind of sometimes they feel like I know when. Tiger Woods first came on the scene, you know, obviously years ago. You know, I think the 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 buzz was that he started picking up a club at three or four years old, and then now every dad wants his son to be born with the club in his hand, you know. Um, <laughs> but but you don't have to be, and and so I think my my story is unique, but not not too un- unique because there are several guys who some guys didn't even play high school football and, and play college or went to the military and came back and played. So. It was just it was just where I was supposed to be uh, for those 10 years. I played I got drafted by the Los Angeles Rams. I played there two years, left and went to uh, Washington, stayed there four years, uh, won a Super Bowl in 92 with uh, with Washington. That was Super Bowl 26. We beat the uh, Buffalo Bills. Jim Kelly, great quarterback. Those guys did it four years in a row. And it's tough to get their one. 
but uh, we beat those guys. Um, and then um, in 93, I went back to L.A., St. Louis in 95, and then retired from the Saints in 97 uh, after a year and a half, and then moved back to Georgia. And, and so we kind of just progressed from there, man, and have three boys, Lance, Landon, and Luke, have a great family, got two grandkids, and, uh, and I'm blessed, man, tremendously blessed. Nice. So what moved you to, to go from being a, a football player retired in Georgia to uh, starting a sausage company? <laughs> you know what, man? It, again, it's, you know, it, it, you want to say fate, but I think it's more than fate. I think it's, it's, it's purposed. It's, it's, we, it's almost like, and people sometimes don't want to hear that. And sometimes it takes the, it takes the, 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 um, the, the, what is the word I'm looking for? Right. It, it takes the effort out of, out of, out of, and the intentionality about what we're supposed to be doing. Like, if you know, I'm going to go this way anyway, then I can do anything I want to do. If, if, if I'm, if I know I'm not going to be playing in the pros, why do I need to play high school? If I know I'm not going to be studying it and, and, and I'm going to be, you know, uh, an English teacher, why am I going to take English in high school? All of those things. And so it just happens so that I'm, supposed to be doing this in a sense because it's opened some doors for me. It's, it's put me in front of in front of some people to share my story. And so when I retired, I got I started working with a, uh, a company called Bubba Burgers. Um, if you've heard of Bubba, Bubba Burgers, they're, they're, they're widely known now. But a friend of mine, their company, their family started it. They affectionately call it their dad Bubba. He was a big supporter of Georgia Southern football. And so I started just just as friends. We started hanging out together, going, calling on a couple of accounts that he had. And I enjoyed what I was doing. I enjoyed meeting the people. I enjoyed hanging out and doing what I did. I didn't know a thing about product, but I enjoyed the people. And, and years later, uh, he, he left the family business and got with a company out of Oklahoma that was connected to the military. And they were trying to get into the military sales. And so I started working with that company, uh, traveled all over the world. And from there, a company reached out to him and said, hey, almost like Jimmy Dean's or George Foreman, I believe, just reached out and said, hey, Fred, we'd like to partner with you on some product. And it just happened to be sausage. They could have called me and asked me about, uh, you know, turkey or, or cheese or something. <laughs> but it just happened to be sausage. And that was back in 1997. We started the Fred Stokes Foods brand. Nice. But well, you mentioned uh, relationships. So how's the value of connection been helpful in, in your journey? I'm sorry, do that again? Just you mentioned relationships and connection. How has relationships and connection been a part of your journey? Um, I, I, it's, been a, it's been a tremendous part of my journey because we do not get where we're going by ourselves. There is no such thing as I pull myself up by my own bootstraps. Somebody had to make the boots and the straps. You know what I'm saying? Okay, it sounds tough. Yeah, I pull myself up by my own bootstraps. Okay, where'd you get the boots from? Okay, you have feet to put some boots on. You know, and so the connections and the relationships, I believe that we need people. We need people in our lives that can uh, sometimes good and bad, sometimes even the bad relationships help us to, to appreciate uh, the ones that are good. And so it's allowed me to travel all over the world. I've connected with some people, some uh, some good, not so good. Uh, but that that in and of itself has allowed me to share my story, my, my God story, so to speak. And and. Um, and, and even winning the Super Bowl, I, I, I have a Super Bowl ring and I tell people that ring is open, open some doors of opportunity, but it's still me. It's still the person. It's still uh, it's still my story and, and the relational value that I bring uh, and not the transactional, but the relational value that I bring. So it's been a it's been a tremendous blessing on both give and take. I've had some people that have tremendously helped me um, get to where I am uh, through their, their advice. Uh, some of them have even. Um, uh, encouraged me through some of the, the mistakes and, and successes they've had. So it's been a tremendous blessing that I have these connections and made those connections after football. Nice. You mentioned uh, relationships with with advisors and so mentors. Who's who's been your your favorite coach and and why? Um, you, you know, it's uh, I have a couple, man. Through high school, each one of my coaches. Were, were had a tremendous impact on my life. Even my basketball coach, when I was in high school, I played basketball, you know, for the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th grade, all through high school, I played basketball. I thought I was gonna be a basketball player, but my my high school football coach, Coach Cravey, uh, Coach Russell, Coach Irk Russell, uh, had a tremendous impact on my life. I mean, 
he saw in me what I couldn't see in myself at the time. You know, I'm a young kid, you know, thinking more about parties than than my profession, um, you know, thinking more about having a good time than 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 honing my craft. And and he saw something in me and and really put effort into um, trying to trying to dig down to where the goal was, if you will, and and uh, and and get past all of that rubble to see that there was a, a great guy here, an athletic, obviously, but a guy that could play at the next level. I remember Coach Russell called uh, Guy McIntyre. Guy McIntyre went to University of Georgia as a tight end, ended up switching positions, played offensive tackle in, at Georgia, and then played offensive tackle in the pros for a long time. He was, I think he played with San Francisco 49ers. I know he was there when I, when Coach Russell called him. Called him, allowed me to talk to Guy McIntyre and share his story, and it really motivated me to, to become more of who I was supposed to be at that time. Uh, then there's there's uh, uh, Joe Gibbs, uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. I mean, he's won several NASCAR championships, three or four at least. He won three uh, Super Bowl championships with three different quarterbacks. Uh, just his life in general, Robert, um, you know, it's not just, and you heard this, it's cliche. It's not what you do when people are looking. It's who you are when people are not looking. It's it's Coach Gibbs of the world, you know, stepping out of that frame of being a coach and saying, hey, guys, you know, I have two boys. I'm a real man. I coach a football team. And he actually said this to us at one point in a meeting with a few of his guys. I'm just a man that happens to coach in the National Football League. I've got two boys. I've got a family. I struggle. I do. And I'm like, whoa. He pulled the shield down and allows us to see behind the veil. And so he's he's right up there. But uh, those are just to, just to name a few. Uh, you you mentioned um, how he is when he's not you know, when nobody's looking. So, what has the value of character been in your journey? Oh my goodness! With with my three boys, man, it's been everything. Um, because it's, it, one of my coaches um, uh, used to say, "It's it's it's what what you do speak so loud, I can't hear what you say." I know he didn't coin the phrase, but it, it's true. It's what you do speak so loud. No matter what you say, I'm watching what you do. And having my three boys, Lance, Landon, and Luke, uh, really kind of put that front and center for me to say, hey, hey, Fred, your boys are watching you. And and yes, you know, I, I travel and speak all over the world and all those things. And and now with social media and, and this whole platform, people can see you uh, even in this 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 uh, this platform you and I are in now. So I, I've been very careful and intentional about making sure that my words and my actions match up. Absolutely. That's that's so important. <clears throat> so tell me about gratitude. Obviously, you've been on a, a long enough journey to recognize how important you know, gratitude can be. Um, how, how has that helped you? Well, I, I guess I'm <laughs> again, man, it, it's my three boys, man. At one point they came home and talking about gratitude and being grateful and thankful and and, and those type things. But um uh, we moved several times. I live in Orlando, Florida now. We've been down here since 2008. Um, and so we moved a couple of times uh, while we were here. And uh, and once ev everywhere we moved, we I mean, we lived in some beautiful homes and some nice places, golf course and all and whatever. But the boys would always go, um, wherever we moved, we moved, I would go, hey, guys, this place is nice. I mean, it's a great area. And, and I'd always say something nice, the gratitude, gratefulness, right? Thankful, uh, appreciative. And and they were home for for the holiday Christmas holidays or Thanksgiving or something and they got the laughing and, and talking about me and they said dad you you're just always grateful for whatever you know we could be living on a bridge and you will be like well gay guys at least it's a quiet bridge you know it's not by the interstate <laughs> I say, you know they were like at least it's not by the interstate you know thank God you know we're grateful for this <laughs> so, but that's just who I am man I I really am that guy uh, I grew up with a uh, with a single parent. I have two younger sisters. The three of us, or the four of us, grew up in a in in kind of just um, uh, not so good way. You know, we we were in poverty. You didn't know it, but we were. And uh, and I just learned early on, Robert, just to be grateful uh, and appreciative and thankful for the little things because I know and I've read that when you're thankful for the little things, more things come to you. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so. What uh, what do you love to do in your free time? Obviously, your boys is a big part of that, but at least they were. <laughs> well, well, for me, man, it's reading. It's uh, I love reading. Uh, I, I love riding horses. When we had horses in Georgia, when I retired, 
uh, from the NFL, we moved back to some family property. We lived on almost 100 acres of land. We had a big old pond, four or five acre pond. And uh, the, the, my closest neighbor was like a mile away. So we literally live in the country. I would tell people we live in the K-U-N-T-R-E-E, -E, the country. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but uh, you know, my, it, then it was just the horses. Now living in Orlando, I haven't, I haven't been able to ride a horse. I've ridden a couple since I've been here, but I still love reading. I love sitting out, out on the lanai, um, just relaxing, driving uh, quietly, uh, not necessarily listening to music. I just I can drive for hours and not listen to anything music. It's just my way to be refreshed and revived and renewed. Um, in one of my in some of my presentations, I talk about you know your lanai time. It's it's getting out on the lanai or the back porch or the patio or wherever it is that you live in the country, and and being able to just unplug from everything, turn your phone off, you know, just shut down where you can be re-energized. And, and so for me, if I've got a book, sometimes I'm reading two or three books at a time. So that for me is, is where I kind of relaxed and, and and I can be refreshed and revived and kind of rejuvenated, if you will. And I love that. So uh, so what do you like to drive? Um, if, I, <laughs> if I did not play in the NFL, I probably would have been a truck driver. Uh, my, my mother's younger brother, um, um, he he just retired a few years uh, from 20 something years of driving uh, for a company. And um, I just I probably would have been driving trucks, uh, no doubt, just because I'd be on the big road and, and you know, just can do your thing and just roll. Um, I, 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 don't, I won't say I like to drive fast cars. because uh, It's still kind of bikes. I've had a couple of motorcycles. Uh, those, those, those crotch rockets, you know, where you just lying down and just, you know, you just rolling, man. I know it's dangerous. I know if you're listening to this, I know it's dangerous. So, so is football. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Um, but, but I had, I had those motorcycles for a number of years, man. And, and I used to be able to get out and just kind of zoom down the road with a couple of friends of mine. Now, man, I just get in my truck, um, when I'm traveling to a speaking engagement or if I'm just kind of running errands, man, just get in my truck and just relax and enjoy, enjoy my, my moment for a bit. Nice. I like that. I'm uh, some of our best times. My wife and I is just driving someplace nowhere, nowhere to go, but just just chilling in the car together. That's so. right. That's right. What was one of your biggest challenges uh, raising a family and and running a business? You say raising and or raising or. Yeah. Just challenges of raising your family while running your business. Um. I, I, that's a great question. Um, I think too many men and women sometimes in, in today's world, they we focus so much on building a career that we lose sight of building a family. Hmm. The career will come and go, but the family is going to be with us forever. That's 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 who we're born with. That's who's going to be beside our bed if they have time, if we have an extended illness. If not, they're going to be at their funeral um at the cemetery uh and and sometimes man i think we forget about building a family and and for me um uh, i know there have been times when i have not done something business wise um maybe missed 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 an appointment sometimes or or was late for a deadline or or got behind on something that i was supposed to be on and and, and it was for my family um, I stayed home as long as I could at times when I had to travel. I would I would sacrifice hours of driving at night just to stay home with my family through the night. Um, and so just thinking about that, man, has, has, has and I thought about how I wanted my boys to be, because, again, we're teaching a lesson even when we don't feel like we're in a classroom. It's a lesson of life and how you are with your wife. Uh, men and how you are um, towards your business, towards life, the frustrations that that may impact you and how you deal with those. The kids are watching. And so for me, the, the toughest part was just making sure that I, I, I really show my boys that they were important, that they were more important than my business. And business is important. You got to you got to make money. You got to keep a roof over, the, over, the, over your head. You got to put food on the table. Got to keep the lights on. But I did not want them to have any doubt that my business was more valuable to me than they were. Nice. Yeah. So family first. 
it, that's a huge value. It's still that way, man. It's still that way now. I mean, I, I, I've got two grandkids now and sometimes, and I work from home, uh, obviously during COVID, everybody did, but uh, <laughs> you know, I've got, I work from home. I have an home office that I work in. And, and so I found myself sometime, Robert, uh, I, I, I hear my granddaughter out and, and I, I should be doing something. Next thing you know, I walk out to go to the kitchen or do something, you know, and uh, and I find myself playing with her and I'm going, oh, I got some work to do. <laughs> it's like oh, I'm supposed to be working. I find wow. myself on the floor, you know, talking to my granddaughter, talking that Google talk, you know, da, da, da. And I'm like, oh, granddad's supposed to be working right now. <laughs> How, how old is your granddaughter? Uh, my our youngest granddaughter is uh is she'll be a year old. Uh, oh wow! Next month. Yeah, she'll be a year old next month, and we have a fourteen month old uh, granddaughter who's who's out in California. Wow! So yeah. my grandson turns five next month, and uh, congratulations to have, him. Man. We're we're watching him too, and I get, I have the same problem. He's like, I want to go ride my bike. I'm like, all right, let's go. Yep, that's right. That's right. <laughs> whatever. Like, whatever. Are you off today? It's like. No, I'm not off. I got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anytime he wants to do something, we definitely, you know, we can set aside what we're doing to to do that. And that's one of the benefits of, of running your own business is. That's right. That's right. I don't want to be a slave to my business. <laughs> no, no. And, and you know what? And, and and your kids will know it. And you'll train them that that when they get a business, when they get up with their family, that that family doesn't come first. Family comes whenever they can fit them in business and everything else is above family. And and that's a sad story to tell and a sad lesson to learn for kids from their parents. Absolutely. And I think that's what holds some people back from making the leap to be entrepreneurs is because, yeah, yeah they- It's tough now. I tell I told my boys, my, my youngest son, Luke, um, you know, I got Lance Landon and Luke and Luke is 25 years old. He's an entrepreneur at heart. Um, my son Landon, he said, "Dad, I'm a nine to fiver. He's he's a graphics designer. Um, nice, but he he he. Matter of fact, he designed my logo uh, on my shirt, uh, Lint Brother. But uh, and then Lance is kind of a a mixture of, of the two. Uh, he's in sales and that kind of stuff. But Luke says, um, I told him, I say, son, the, the to your point, Robert, I said the hardest thing about uh, the most rewarding thing is, is is that you're an entrepreneur, but the hardest thing about it too is that you're an entrepreneur. So <laughs> <laughs> that's right. If yeah, you don't, it's a double, it's you a don't double do, story, man. If you don't do the work, you don't get to get paid. Come on now, for real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you may get a dollar today and five dollars next week and fifty dollars a week after that, and nothing two weeks after that, and it's just <laughs> it's just up and down. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you a curveball now. So what, okay. What's your well, most memorable you year? Though. At least you warn me that, that I can be looking for it, man. <laughs> That's right. What, uh, what, what's your favorite date? What was your favorite date with your wife? You've been together quite a while, so that might be hard to narrow it down. But um, My favorite date? Your most memorable date with your wife, yeah. Um, two of them come to mind immediately. Good. Um, one of them is that we were dating. We weren't quite, we weren't married yet. We were dating. We had our wedding day set and um, we were walking. We were, I was, in, it was during the off season. I was, I was playing ball because we met when I was in the NFL, my first year in the NFL. And so um, we were walking out, um, just kind of enjoying the evening. And, and she, she, she probably could tell you this story too. If you ask her, say, tell us about the time you and Fred were walking when it was really cold, but it was extremely cold, cold outside. And and I'm talking to her and I'm just enjoying her company. And then all of a sudden it dawned on me how cold it was. And I thought, man, it is extremely cold. I, I must be in love. And at that moment, you know, I really realized that this is the girl for me, even though we had already planned our wedding day and all of that stuff. Uh, the other one probably was a trip we took to Hawaii. Um, uh, I was a player rep for New Orleans for the Saints. And uh, we were there for nine days. Um, you know, the first day we got there, uh, I mean, we were in we were in Maui, and so in Maui is beautiful. Uh, but we were there, and we walked into the hotel. We opened the 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 the, the uh, storm shutters, the the uh, plantation shutters, you know, and just and the beach is right there, and the waves are rustling. And my wife goes, "Honey, the boys would love this." And I looked at it and go, "But in next nine days, I have no kids." <laughs> But but that's probably those two men probably stick out the most. I mean, like you said, we've been married for 32 years. So we've had a I mean, I could go down the list and even name more. 
and she probably made it might not even name those two but uh those are just two that stick out in my mind nice it's always good to have those moments when you're when you're doing something and you realize that's why i love her right yes I, Yes, that's why Chip, this is right. You probably mentioned something about an RV trip we took, but uh, but yeah, we got we got tons, man. We we do try to. That's something else that we do try to do. We try to be intentional about the time we spend together as well. Nice, that's fantastic. I love dating my wife. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, what moved you to uh, to start a nonprofit? God, in short, uh, God did. Um, I. I, we moved to Orlando in 2008. Um, a Category 4 tornado destroyed our home in Georgia, what I call my forever home. Uh, wow. It was it was beautiful home, custom built, uh, built by one of my former teammates at Georgia Southern uh, who's in the building industry. He, he builds, Tim Durden builds cu custom homes. And and so he built the home and I, I prepped it for it when I got, we had two fireplaces and, you know, you prep the house for when we get old and how you wanted the bed downstairs. Just a lot of things that I'm planning for being old in that house. And we lived there for 10 years in 2008, a category four tornado destroyed that home. And so we moved here to Orlando uh, to be a part of a church that my former teammate, Tim Johnson, uh, is now the senior pastor of. And so while I was with uh, the church, uh, I became the men's leader of our church. And, and I just started talking to the men about having men in their life that they can be completely honest with. And I would be standing in front of these guys and I'll be doing these trainings and workshops and, and, and I would just pull my pockets out of my jeans. I'm a boots and jeans guy. I love horses. Like I said, when you ask them about relaxing, so I've got boots and jeans on all the time. So I pull my pockets of my jeans out, took all of my contents out of my pocket. And I'm telling the guys, you got to have somebody that you can get down to the lint with. I mean, that knows everything. Not not 15 guys, not 10, maybe three to five guys, maybe, but at least one or two guys. You cannot be walking by yourself. So I would just share these 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 truth with these men. And then I, I realized that for myself. But over time, my wife would hear me and talk about that. And she said, honey, you, you need to pray about that whole Lent thing you talk about with the men. Like, And I'm like, I'm just telling them they got to have somebody they can get down to the Lent with. And so through prayer, man, and just just listening, and, and God just gave me the the, the acronym LINT, L-I-N-T, life I never tell, because men don't talk. We talk about our finances. We talk about our you know sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Uh, we talk about everything under the sun. We just don't talk about those deep life issues that keep us up at night or keep us preoccupied during the day. And that's the LINT issues, life I never tell. We, we became a nonprofit in the uh, first part of this year. And but it's been it's something I've been placed on my heart probably a year and a half ago. Yeah, that's that's terrific. Um, you know, having been in in ministry and and understanding men, I mean, there's two things. You know, men don't go to hospitals unless something is hanging off or shooting blood. Yeah, and 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 they don't talk about what's really going on. Exactly, and that's <laughs> why men commit suicide on average four times to one uh, with women. Women attempt suicide more. But men actually commit suicide more because we don't talk. And, and I can I can tell, sit here and tell you the rest of this time that we have story after story of men that I've personally known or known through other men that committed suicide. And, and the person that told about it said we didn't know. Oh, no. We, yeah, we've just uh, had friends. I mean, I'm a chaplain at the our NASCAR local NASCAR track here and, and uh, one of our drivers committed suicide in the middle of last year. Wow. wow. And he was he was the guy that always said, you know, oh, that's the wimp's way out. And that'll never, you know. And But he wasn't taught. I guarantee you he, he didn't, didn't tell anybody. That. Nope. Yeah. Didn't nope. talk to anybody. Most guys don't. A, fr a friend of mine owns a car dealership in Georgia, where I'm from, in Vidalia, Georgia. And I spoke to him about a month ago. And their social media director, young guy, late 20s, talking about getting married and he said, Fred, three days before he committed suicide, he was in my office and we were laughing and talking. And three days later, he committed suicide. Uh, so so the Lent brother part is is our 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 statement of fact, Robert, is if you look at our website, uh, lentbrother.com, it's not S, it's not with an S, it's just singular, lentbrother.com. You'll see that our statement of fact says every man needs another man that he can get down to the Lent with in the pocket of his soul. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
you know, there's there's guys that feel like, well, I can tell my wife. That there's just things you just you can't tell your wife. And I've had and guys in conferences. I've done workshops and trainings, and I'll go around and and I had one guy. Oh yeah, man, my wife and I talk all the time. Yeah, I hear guys say that, and that's good. That's great. Good for you. Talk to your wife. Have a relationship with your wife. But your wife does not need to know the lint issues. Right. You can know your deep emotional things going on. But Absolutely. Some things are only for. Uh, you're a male friend, a male brother, a, a lint brother to hear. That's yeah, it. I that is so powerful because there are there's just things that you're not going to tell your wife, and 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 you shouldn't because they'll hurt her and 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 it's not meant, it's not meant for her ears. Well, even if it doesn't hurt her, it, she won't understand because here's the thing that I, I I've told my wife this before, and we've gone through some stuff through our through our 32 years of marriage. I told her, I said, honey. It's like this. You've been flying. We've been flying on a plane. I say the the pilot, the the the, the senior pilot, the one who's flying, not the co-captain, but the pilot. I said he's getting information from air traffic control. They're telling him, "Hey, up ahead, you're going to have some turbulence." Yada yada yada. Give him the weather report and what's going on. I said that pilot knows exactly what's getting ready to happen, and he comes on the intercom very calmly. Uh, flight attendants, this is your captain Joe speaking. With it, and his voice is very calm, very methodical. Uh, flight attendants, please take your seats. We're going to be experiencing some turbulence. We're going to try to climb up high. He's going through all of this stuff. I said, What if he came on and just started screaming? Sit your tails down. We get ready to go. <laughs> you know I said, the the, the 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 crew members, the 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 co captain, everybody's going to panic. So men can't tell their wives sometimes the stress and struggle that they're going through. Because their wife needs to be able to count on them to say, hey, if you're scared, I'm petrified. So we have to be cool, calm, and collective in the middle of the storm, but at the same time have a limp brother that we can talk about, hey, I'm experiencing some turbulence in my life right now, and I'm scared. Now, my wife doesn't know I'm scared. My kids don't know I'm scared. I look like a hero to my boys, but I'm scared to death. Man, I thought about leaving my family. I don't want to leave my family, but you're not going to tell your wife, hey, honey, I thought about leaving you. Like you said, Robert, that's not something that she needs to hear and needs to have in her brain. So, you know, we can go down the chart and pick out certain things that the women that need to hear. But the bottom line is you need a lint brother, a lint, not a lint sister, <laughs> a lint <laughs> wife. You need a lint brother who you can get down to the lint in the pocket of your life with. Yeah. I I think that's fantastic. So what what kind of tools are you are you offering? What is this through churches? What's your goal? My my goal is to to really um I won't say implement it in churches, but yes, churches are 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 basically a a feeding ground or or starting point or or a, a landing place, if you will. But I've I've also done um some of this strategically. In, in some of the corporate uh, groups that I've spoken to. Um, and I say strategically just because, you know, obviously you're not in there, you know, beating anybody over the head with the Bible or with your faith. Um, but my my goal is to to implement this. We, we're, I'm, I'm actually on the tail end of, of, of finishing up our, our six or seven week curriculum uh, for Lent Brother. And it just goes down the list and talks about what a Lent Brother is, why do I need a Lent Brother, the ultimate Lent Brother model, where I can find a Lent Brother, all of those things. And those are one, those are six, seven week sessions, uh, curriculum that I finished uh, finishing up with. But to your answer, Robert, the goal is that it is to back up what our statement of fact says, every man. So no matter where he is, whether he's in corporate America or, or church or at a school coaching, um, at a regular nine to five job, every man has life issues. Um, our, our, our vision is, is uh, our vision statement says this, is that uh, uh, our desire is to see men emotionally free so that they can walk in victory and freedom from the issues of life that try to keep them in bondage. So, so, our, so our vision is to see men emotionally free. That's every man. So to your point, it's not just churches. It's yeah, you can implement in the churches, but this can also be done uh, in corporate America if you've got some a training that we can do uh, because of the curriculum. Um, yes, it is faith based. So if somebody that is that does not believe in God or you know something like that and want to try to get around that, I'm sorry, it is what it is. Well, and it's it still applies to every man. Like yes, 
every man's dealing with the same stuff, whether they believe in God or not. Yep. Now, obviously, God makes it a lot easier to deal with that stuff. Well, but, well he, he, he makes it a lot easier just because it, it, it's, it's what I say. This is taking it back to the maker. Right. If, if you've got a problem with your engine in your truck and I've got a problem with my engine in my truck and both of us drive us. I'll let you pick. Will you Chevy, Ford, Toyota? What you pick the truck? I'm a, I'm a Ford guy. Sorry. Okay, I was gonna say Ford, but I didn't want to offend anybody. I'd be like, well, I don't drive a Ford. <laughs> but but That's we both awesome. have a we both have engine problems in our in our truck. To your point, you take your truck back to the to the Ford dealership. I take my truck to to my cousin Jojo down the street. <laughs> Who's gonna have more peace of mind about making sure that you probably will because you're taking it back to the maker. Not that my cousin Jojo doesn't know how to fix cars or trucks. It's just that Ford made our trucks. So you you can sit in the lobby, you can drop it off and be going and say, hey, Ford's going to take care of it. They got the parts. They made them, yada, yada, yada. I'm taking my cousin Jojo. I don't know where he's getting the parts. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so not necessarily our life will be easier, Robert, just because of our issues and our relationship with Christ. It's, it's peace of mind is what I call it, that that I have a relationship with God. Man, that. That's a fantastic example, and thank yeah. you for sharing it. It's uh, so <laughs> well, as so you know, powerful. from this time we on the podcast, I'm an analogetic person, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it it is so powerful, and and uh, I I think, I mean, what you're what you're creating is is so necessary, and and I think your experiences are unique to open some doors that you mentioned, like universities and corporate because of your entrepreneurial experience. And, and then of course, your connections with, with the church. And so just being able to target all three of those areas, right? If I can get into universities through sports and I can get into you know professional sports, obviously yeah. those guys are, are wrestling with all these same issues too. And, and that can create a network that can just spread, spread your message um, and equip men to have these relationships that are, mm -hmm. that are just necessary. And, mm -hmm. and we're all wanting, right. Yes. I, I think men used to have the campfire, right. The think about the West, you're, you're a horse guy. So I think about the, the campfire and the men sitting around the campfire after moving the cows all day long and, and, and they could talk, Yeah. <laughs> you know, the, yeah. the women are doing whatever the women do it in the evening to, to get the children taken care of and other things. And, and the men could talk. And now men drive home from work and pull in through the automatic garage door opener, close the garage door, and pff, now they're dealing with the family. And and they don't have um, that place to connect to men and yep. to to have those conversations that just, you know, they may not even be looking for answers. They just need somebody to hear what's dancing around in their head. <laughs> well, you know what? And, and that's the thing, though, Robert. It's, it's what I call with, with, with the Lent, right? Um, in our curriculum, we talk, I'll compare the lint in the pocket of our life with lint in the in a lint in a dryer, a clothes dryer, because that lint that comes out of those clothes goes into that compartment, and then you take it and clean it out and put it in the trash. The lint that comes out of the pocket of our soul, I need a lint brother that I can clean this out with and we put it in the trash or we <laughs> burn it. And 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 that's the same way. And but it keeps coming back. I mean, it's our and the reason it keeps coming back is, is the lint. Every time you do laundry, it's going to accumulate some lint in the in the lint trap. Every day, just living our lives accumulate lint, and so we need a lint brother to help us filter that out. Why? Because just like lint with the clothes, it's it's a part of the fabric, and the lint in our life is just a part of life. It's a part of living. So you can't ever get to a point where you don't you're without lint life issues. Cause if you're living, you're going to have life issues. Absolutely. And, yeah. and some of us create more than others. Yes. <laughs> We're rough well, well, by nature of what you do. I mean, it, obviously, you know, the president of the United States or, or an executive or you yourself who, who is very well known and out in the media and all those things, you know, as opposed to somebody that works at a regular nine to five in a small town and only have a pe few people that know who they are. You're right. That person, but that person still have life issues. That's why I say every man, because you can't separate it, you know, based off of the color of your skin, your economic or social status, you know, where you live in the country uh, or the world. If you're a man, you've got life issues. <laughs> Absolutely. As long as you're breathing. As long as you're breathing, brother. As you're long making as you're lint. <laughs> you you got to have somebody to get down to the lint with.
that's that's fantastic. Well, obviously, the impact you're trying to make through through your nonprofit, you recognize the value of contribution, and you've been in a position of you know having possessions and having you know stuff. How is how has contribution been valuable in in your growth and and your journey as a man? Um, what for me or for for Lent brother or just in, in general? Uh, in general, um, it you know what Robert it, the 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 concept of that and and the and the the thing that comes to mind is that somebody believes in you, they believe in you and and what you stand for and what you represent, and and because of that they want to partner with you and be a part of what you're doing, and I think that in in and of itself speaks volume because, um, you know, business is relational. Um, and, and, and if I've got people that, um, because I can't sell you on Lent brother, I can't sell you on our product. We, we have a, a brand of sausage called Fred Stokes foods at Fred Stokes sauce. I can't, I don't want to sell you on those things. I want you to, to taste them, if you will, uh, take a second to evaluate what we're doing and, 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 and what we represent. And if that fits in line with who you are and what you represent, and you don't mind, uh, being associated with us and our product and our service and what we're doing, then it 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 it, it adds value to us in, in essence. And also too, it it lets me know that that I'm doing something that has impact and and hopefully prayerfully something that has eternal value that will live long after I'm gone. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, and obviously, you know what you're doing with Lint Brother, and it your goal is is for it to multiply. Yes. And, and that's only going to happen through contribution. Exactly. Exactly. So, well, we've got to get curriculum. I mean, we're getting ready to write, uh, finish this up so we can send it to print. We're going to need books. Um, I've got three churches that I'm speaking at in the next six weeks, seven weeks. Um, and so we're going to be able to, not now because it's not printed, but we'll be able to do that. Our, our goal also too is to be able to provide resources for men that may be in a position where they don't have those resources through whatever uh, may happen, but we can eliminate that process in their mind that, hey, I can go, I want to go get help, but I don't have the the resource. I don't have the connections that we can, we're co connecting with uh, institutions uh, and places that uh, even through the NFL, uh, my, our partnership with the NFL, that we can have those resources, those dollars and cents, if you will, to to minimize that. Because again, remember, it's it's our vision is to see men emotionally free, and it starts with you not having to worry about your family, be concerned about your job, or what you're going to be doing. And sometimes that does take resources, financial resources. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so what's the big dream? What's the big dream for uh, Lint Brother? The 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 big dream uh, for Lint Brother is that um, this curriculum, that this concept, if you will is is worldwide um that every man understands um the the term lent brother and and what it means in its truest sense and can say that that i have another man two or three maybe five that i can get down to the lint with and our ultimate goal as a result of that is to minimize and decrease the suicide rate that's fantastic yeah man i i'm just so touched by by your mission and by your you. taking action on something that that all of us have experienced and yet not necessarily done anything about and so thank you for for taking action and making something happen for men and well robert i, I appreciate it and, and 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 just briefly man i've been there i've been at the edge of life where i myself um after winning the super bowl with the red with washington with the redskins at that time washington football team now but after winning football when the Super Bowl in Washington, I found myself in L.A. Um, only seconds away from committing suicide myself. I had millions of dollars in the bank. I had, you know, three houses, a house in L.A., a house in Virginia where we were living previously. I had my mom's house in Georgia. I had, you know, had the things of the world. Um, I was a success and kicking butt externally, but I was a failure in getting my butt kicked internally. And so I've been, I mean, millimeters away from suicide and only by the grace of God that I'm still here. And so I've taken that personal experience to understand. It helps me kind of get to a place with men to go. You can't shake and bake with me. You can't, you can fudge with me. You can lie if you want to, but I've been there and I understand. So 
If you want to keep living that way, great. But I'm telling you, every man needs a Lent, brother. Hmm, absolutely. Well, I appreciate you using your experience. Um, Thank you. To make that happen. And so, so just last, last question. If you, so let's say maybe it's a man. Normally I'd say, you know, there's an entrepreneur sitting across from you and you're looking him eye to eye, you know, what's your, Fred's words of wisdom, but maybe maybe it's words of wisdom to a man that's listening right now. Um, what what would you tell him? Um, for an ent entrepreneur, I would say that first you gotta you gotta do the do the soul searching and 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 ask yourself: Are you do you like the idea of being an entrepreneur, or are you an entrepreneur at heart? Because mm -hmm. some people like the idea of being an entrepreneur. Yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. I do my own thing. But they're not willing to pay the price, and um, and they're not truly an entrepreneur at heart, and that's what they that's what who they are in their very soul. That question I would ask. The other I would say, Robert, is to 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 make sure that that you have based off of what we talked about on here, and I appreciate this time and this platform. Uh, make sure you have another brother in your life to the concept that we're talking about, a Lent brother, um, where you can talk about that. The, the Lent, the life that you never tell to your average friends. And it's great to have associates. And I'm not saying that Lent Brother is a, is a one-stop shop. I, I think it should be a conglomerate of things that can get you to that next level. And Lent Brother is a part of that process. Uh, I would say that. Um, do some soul searching. Make sure you, you're truly an uh, entrepreneur at heart. Make sure you've got a Lent Brother or two or three. And, and make sure that your entrepreneurial uh, quest and your goals and your desires do not supersede those of your families. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Fantastic, man. Thank you so much for taking the time today. I sure learned so much from you and just appreciate you, hearing so much of your journey and uh, looking forward to, to seeing what God's going to do with, with Lit brother. And then with your three boys and of course your wife, Regina, and you are just going to keep conquering the world together. So I'm excited right. to to have come alongside your journey for, and, and now I hope to, to stay a part of it. Well, you know what, man, I appreciate you again. And at some point in time, somewhere down the road, we're going to get from behind this screen and maybe we can see each other face to face. <laughs> that, that would be fantastic. I, uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get down to Palm Beach and see our friend Ben. So that's right. That's right. So we can do that together. But but uh, Robert, thank you again, man, for this time. And hopefully, man, by what you're doing, the impact you're making in your in your space, that that this today, what you and I shared, man, can be an impact in somebody's life. Absolutely. Well, if you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. We have a free gift for you at add value number two entrepreneurs dot com. We've created a collection of the top tips that have been shared on our show for entrepreneurs. Do you struggle with procrastination, putting off the work until the last minute? Well, you are not alone. Many of our clients start there. We are launching a new five-day challenge to help you take more action and make more money in your business. Each day is a 10-minute video lesson and a worksheet. If you take 15 to 30 minutes to do the worksheet, it will change your life and business and exponentially increase the amount of work you get done each day. Right now, it is only $27 and contains five of our best tools for helping you move forward. It can be found at addvalue2life.com slash action. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.